Hi and welcome to a new series of tutorials. In this tutorial we are going to talk about how we could take a real-life uh, footage like this one and implement a 3D object into it. As you can see I have left this area of the desk empty so that when something happens uh, when the sorry when the finger clicks um, something could happen in this in this area um, before we can take this footage into, into 3D Studio Max we have to get or extract every single frame as an image in order to do that we're gonna go into After Effect and I'm gonna double click here and I'm gonna load up the image that I have and I'm just gonna click and drag that down here now this is the uh, the footage that I have it's uh, same as what you've seen before I don't really like this last bit where the camera tries to adjust to my finger because um, we don't want any movement really in the camera so I'm gonna actually go to here and just uh, make sure the video finishes uh, by the time it gets to here also what I'm gonna do which I forgot to do is to go here and um, open up this program so you can see the shortcuts and the keyboard shortcuts that I press okay <clears throat> so we have the uh, caps lock on so we have to um, extract every frame as a separate image how do we do that uh, we need to start rendering this to do that we need to go to I believe it's edit or file uh, export no actually it's in composition uh, add to render queue control M is a shortcut it, once you know the, sh the shortcuts you don't really need to look for the menus so control M sends it to the render queue and you want to go to where it says lossless the format I'm going to use JPEG. You could use something like a PNG sequence. Um, that would be fine as well. In this case, I'm just going to go with uh, a JPEG sequence. And I'm going to press OK. And the format option, let's have a look. Bigger file size. Make, you know, that just gives me the maximum quality that I can get. I'm going to press OK. And then you will see that the name changes to this. Uh, you'll have all these uh, uh, hashes here, which will which means that you will, your image will be saved as clip 00001 and the next image is clip underscore 0002, 0034, and it continues in the queue like that um, and I want to put them all here actually I might create a new folder and call it uh, uh, J, sorry I might call these why would I not have it as Right. Oh, I, I guess I can't write it in. Um, well, I actually can. J pegs. How hard can it be to type JPEG? Um, okay, I'm gonna save them here as clip. Whatever. Save. And I'm gonna hit render. Hopefully, it shouldn't take long for it to render. So I'm not going to pause the video here. Um, what it's doing, or hopefully what it's doing, is that it's extracting all of these um, frames into a separate image, which is exactly what we need in order to take into 3ds Max. Each of those images will sit on a frame. <clears throat> okay, let me go ahead and open up. this file okay that's done so if I go to my JPEG folder you can see that I have how many images it says I have 317 different images which just show my finger uh, you know for my fingers kind of clicking and then a thumbs up coming up 317 images good we can close After Effects now and go into 3ds Max uh, we want to bring those images and put them in a background in order to do that we need to go to uh, view and we want to go to viewport background 
and then we're going to go to configure view per background alt b is a shortcut here we want to use a file and we're going to click on files and I'm going to go and find the very first uh, JPEG and before I press open I want to make sure that I come down here and I click on sequence so it knows that it needs to bring everything in if I go to setup everything's fine I guess uh, sequence and press OK and press OK to that what's happened now is that 3s Max has got access to those images and not only to the images themselves uh, only, only to one image it has access to the entire uh, into the entire images that we rendered out um, and we're gonna say anime background press OK so now what I have is um, my background being changed and as I move my timeline you should be able to see that the animation plays in my background which is exactly what I need okay that's good but of course I need to increase my uh, frames to see the rest of the animation but before we get to that what we need to do is we need to make sure that our viewport or what we see is the same resolution as the images I know for a fact that the resolution of my images are 1080p so what I want to do is press F10 to go to my render setup or you could click on this icon here and then here you could click on custom HDTV and then choose 1920 by 1080 p and now what you want to do is hold shift and press F and that will give you this extra window now this is exactly the size of your uh, your window now the next stage is to make sure that this grid that we have here matches something such as the table or maybe this box that I have here so what I need to do is zoom in and out enough times in order to rotate and scale this grid well not scale but zoom in and out from it to a point that I could see the grid sits on one of these surfaces so in this case this looks roughly okay the edge of this this edge of the grid sits with this edge of the table on the other side it matches it pretty well but not perfect I could try to adjust that a tiny bit Let's have a look. that seems better what you want to make what you want to do is to make sure that these objects sit exactly um, uh, the grid sits exactly on something within your object now if you don't have a table you want to make sure that you have some sort of a reference in your image in order to make this easier for yourself so the grid is set um, if I was to create a box or let's create a teapot if I was to create a teapot here because I have set the grid correctly um, it would seem like the teapot is sitting right on top of that grid or on top of the table now once we are happy with this we need to record this position we need to record the position of how we, we look at the grid in order to do that I'm gonna press ctrl C to create a camera and then now I know I created the camera because on here it says camera I'm gonna go to perspective you're gonna make sure that you press P immediately because if you don't you could go and change your camera so make sure you press P immediately after you press ctrl C uh, now I want to make sure that I I can in no way or form move any of these not only the, the camera but the target as well so I want to select them both I want to go to the hierarchy tab link info and I want to check all these boxes here so that I can't rotate or move any of this so now even if I wanted to I couldn't move the camera or the um, the target so the camera is locked in that place that's great cool I'm going to stop the video here and then uh, I'll see you in the next chapter